Won't you please? Won't you please? Please, won't you watch my channel? Hello, YouTube neighbors. <laughs> Greetings one and all, and welcome once again to Mr. Tom's Neighborhood. I mean Tom's Hip Parade. Uh, yes, as you can see, I am uh, dressed out a little bit differently uh, today than usual. Uh, that's because this is a rather different kind of video I'll be sh giving you today. Uh, it's a pair of album reviews I'm going to be talking about. Uh, that in itself may not be terribly unusual. It's the types of albums that I'll be talking about today that are kind of unusual, and I don't expect all of my... Uh, subscribers and viewers who regularly watch me to watch this video because both of these albums I realize uh, have a limited a very limited appeal they're going to appeal to a very narrow audience but still I just kind of wanted to uh, give you guys something a little unusual which I hope I'm doing regularly is you know something different from all the other music youtubers out there uh, but also you know I, I just I kind of wanted to share these with you uh, yeah, because they, they affected me both in uh, similar but different ways and I'll explain what I mean in a few minutes. And another thing that I that kind of struck me as I was uh, assembling the notes for this video is that these two albums have something else in common. Is one of them, at, at least in my opinion, is really good to listen to first thing in the morning, at the beginning of the day, and the other one, the very last thing in the evening, at night when you're unwinding for bed. So that kind of a, a book bookend sort sort of a thing for uh, for your average day. But anyway, let's uh, stop the chitter chatter and get on with the matter no rhyme intended, uh, and talk about the first of the two albums I'm going to be talking about today is It's Such a Good Feeling, The Best of Mr. Rogers. Yep. See, I told you this was going to be an unusual video. Everybody out there pretty much knows who Mr. Rogers was, at least in the vaguest possible sense. He was a children's show host, and in fact he's enjoyed a bit of a uh, cultural resurgence, I guess you'd say. There's a, a documentary that came out a couple of years back, uh, Won't You Be My Neighbor, I think is the name of it, and it was very, very fascinating. I watched it. I really enjoyed it. And of course, there is the biopic of him. Uh, I can't remember what the name of that one is, but of course, it stars Tom Hanks as Fred Rogers, which is uh, is coming out or has come out in the theaters. It's it's, it's release is imminent, I guess. But uh, yeah, I mean, I watched his show when I was a little kid. Uh, for I'm not sure how many years I watched it, but it feels like it was for a long, long time. Uh, but anyway, yeah, he so he was a part of my childhood, and in fact. Uh, confession time here. A couple of years ago when I was up in Portland, um, I decided to add to my Funko Pop collection Mr. Rogers. Yes, they made a Mr. Rogers Funko, so uh, yeah, he is one of the few uh, non-music um, personalities that I decided to, uh, I wanted to collect the Funko of. Although in a way, and this is kind of leading into what I'm going to be talking about next, um, in a way he was a music personality because uh, one little known fact about Fred Rogers was that his first degree that he earned was in music composition. He got a bachelor of bachelor's, or did he actually get a master's? I can't remember. In music composition. And uh, that was one thing I didn't realize, or uh, either that or I had just forgotten about, possibly didn't even occur to me at the time, was how much music was a part of Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood, his show. Uh, he would sing songs constantly on the show, uh, and of course, that is the raison d'etre of the CD, is this features so many of the songs that were on his show. Fred Rogers wrote every single song on this album, uh, 23 tracks on here, except for the lyrics in one of the songs. So, yeah, so it would figure that he's got a degree, a degree in music composition with, as, uh, as wonderful as these songs are, when I first saw Caught Wind that this uh, album was coming out, my first reaction was kind of puzzlement. It's like, who's going to buy this? Who's going to listen to it? Uh, but of course, as I said, you know, as I just mentioned, Mr. Rogers was such a part of my childhood, my youth, that I decided, just out of curiosity's sake, I decided to stream it, and uh, I fig just figured it would be a silly, silly, whimsical little listen. But as it played, I will tell you the truth, I experienced emotions and memories that I never saw coming. I never thought I would feel these feelings when I listened to the album. I quickly realized, probably less than halfway through listening to uh, the album on streaming that I was not going to be able to resist picking up the CD. And probably when I was listening to it on the bus ride into work in the morning, that morning, I probably had this goofy little smile on my face the whole time. You have to know, I'm, and it probably comes across in the songs, what just a gentle and warm and good-natured person Fred Rogers was. And also my adult self uh, realized as I was li listening to this album, what a gift and treasure 
Mr. Rogers was to the all the generations and generations of children who watched and learned from his show over the years and also honestly how timeless a lot of his lessons still are today that I mean even even us adults could learn a thing or two from Mr. Rogers trust me uh, Sesame Street helped kids uh, learn their mental building blocks like learning their ABCs and their one two threes and the meanings of basic words like near and far Mr. Rogers, on the other hand, helped to, get, to give kids their emotional build, building blocks in a way. He helped so many kids, probably myself included, uh, develop their sense of self. Uh, things like accepting your weaknesses, uh, for instance, the emotion of fear, that it's okay to have fear uh, in the song, You Can Never Go Down the Drain, as well as your curiosity. Uh, there's a song called Some Things I Don't Understand, and uh, you know that kind of in a way that just hints at how parents can get a little uh, annoyed at their children constantly asking why 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 but you know it, it helps it Fred Rogers helped kids realize that curiosity is a part of growing up and uh, and other things also like relating to others uh, there's a song called sometimes people are good it talks about how sometimes people are good sometimes pe people are bad you know and then a song uh, called then your heart is full of love which talks about uh, uh, developing a sense of empathy for others you know it's always a good thing and then of course uh, a part and parcel of Fred Rogers show Mr. Rogers neighborhood was the land of make-believe and of course he has a couple of songs at least about nurturing your imagination a song called pretending and another, and another song called the clown in me or you know sometimes you put on a, a, you know a, a funny personality but at the same time knowing the value in being yourself. You have to take off the, the clown mask, so to speak, uh, that goes in, in that song, and also leading into other songs like It's You I Like and You Are Special. So that, you know, talks about how, you know, as I said, the value of being yourself and knowing that you have differences from, from other people and that they're okay. Honestly, that was one of Mr. Rogers' biggest lessons. Not only that, but uh, the virtues of being patient and observant. Uh, there's a song called Look and Listen about, you know, stopping and looking and listening to the world around you and also I like to take my time which you know just have patience take your time doing stuff don't always be in a rush that's something that a lot of adults could uh, learn from honestly really and uh, there were a couple of songs in here that even conveyed possibly a sense of the power of positivity and empowerment in a way in, in, in Mr. Rogers own special way uh, I think I'm going to like today and it's the style to wear a smile uh, those are a couple of songs that kind of uh, teach you uh, teach us the virtues in starting the day with a positive uh, outlook pos you know and you know just trying trying to go forward into the day with a smile on your face rather than you know waking up on the wrong side of the bed and staying there so you know maybe lessons more for the adults than for the children but hey if you plant those seeds in the kids minds early as mr. Rogers was well aware of they can go on and affect you for your entire life and and also another song called be brave be strong which kind of, you know, the title says it all. There's a time when fear is okay, but also, you know, you need to uh, try and work past your fears, be brave and be strong. So as you can see, this album is pretty much full of life lessons from front to, front to back. Uh, lessons that not only children can learn a lot from, but I think some of us adults could learn a lot from relearning these uh, lessons. I think every adult should stream this album at least once. Everybody should stream it at least once. Just Just listen to it. And mind you, of course, that uh, most of these songs were made for little kids. I mean, they were all made for little kids, of course. So lyrically, they're going to be very simplistic. Uh, although, he didn't talk down to the kids at the same time. Uh, he would use words in the songs like calendar and hemisphere. I mean, you know, honestly, those are pretty sophisticated words for little kids. You know, preschoolers, basically. You know, but so yeah, he didn't talk down to the kids. But yes, the lyrics are mostly pretty simplistic. Although. Uh, a few of the songs have surprisingly sophisticated arrangements, uh, even even approaching jazz, taking on a jazz feel. That's most prevalent in the song "Look and Listen." So yeah, just listen to that one if you don't listen to any other. It's just you'll you kind of you might be surprised at the arrangement on there. And now obviously this album has the opening theme to the show, "Won't You Be My Neighbor," and it has uh, both its original ending song called "Tomorrow," which he retired six or seven years into the show in the earlier mid '70s. He retired that song and succeeded it with It's Such a Good Feeling, which uh, closed the show from then uh, through the rest of its run into, uh, into 2001. Uh, but my favorite song on the entire album has got to be Once Upon Each Lovely Day. And this song, it suggests that at some point every day, your song will come along. It'll find you in 
in the birds singing or in the wind whistling or in you know the the, the quiet hush of the traffic going by or, or something and it's just you know honestly you know with my most of you know i have a little a bit of a, a fetish or a penchant for songs about music or songs about other songs so that fits right into that uh, scheme so obviously it, it, it's no wonder that i love that song so let's face it but yeah overall i am not sorry one bit that i picked up the cd it makes me feel like a kid again when I listen to it, and that's something that I, I try never to completely and totally let go of my childhood, my youth. I think it's, and I think that's something important that a lot of us should observe. You know, uh, yes, you should be a grown-up, there's a time to be a grown-up, but some part of you should always be a kid, I think, honestly. And, it's, and I think that's one of the best life lessons that anybody could ever learn. So, uh, but anyway, yes. That is my review of uh, Mr. Rod the, the Best of Mr. Rogers. It's such a good feeling. Wonderful, wonderful album. Okay, and now on to my second review of today's video, and it is a very different album from The Best of Mr. Rogers, trust me. This is an album called Reveries, and it is by Rob Simonson. Now, a little story first of all. Uh, I was in House of Records a couple months ago, staring at the new releases board, which is something I don't do very often, uh, in incidentally, and I happened to see the name Rob Simonson on there. And it took me only a few seconds to recognize the name. Uh, he is the guy who did the score to one of my favorite movies, Love, Simon. Uh, now, you might be thinking, wait a minute, didn't Jack Antonoff do that? No, Jack Antonoff supervised the song soundtrack portion of the movie, but Rob Simonson actually did the uh, instrumental score that you heard throughout the movie. Now, to be honest, I had no idea that this album even existed uh, until I saw Rob Simonson's name up on the, uh, the new releases board. Uh, and, and the CD was right there in the uh, the new releases rack right at the front of the store. Uh, so obviously I had no idea what to expect of the album. Uh, so I decided to keep my expectations wide open, picked up the album anyway. Uh, as much as I loved the score from Love, Simon, uh, I was pretty sure this would be nothing like it. And in, indeed, I probably wouldn't want an album of music like that uh, without a movie to go along with it. Just because, you know, that kind of music just in an album by itself would get kind of boring after a while especially if it's instrumental. But anyway, yeah, what really sold me on this album, though, was uh, when I noticed they had a little sticker on the front of the, uh, on front of the shrink wrap right here, former House of Records employee. So yes, apparently Rob Simonson worked for a short while at House of Records. Uh, I think this was before I was a regular customer at the store. Uh, but yeah, he was a student at the University of Oregon, the, the nearby university, and so he worked at the store for a while, uh, being a music major, or music nut, I'm sure. Uh, so yeah, that was kind of a, a further selling point on the album. And I didn't really realize, uh, af until after I bought this album and looked him up on Wikipedia, what a significant uh, resume uh, Rob Simonson has. Uh, he basically started out as a protege of sorts of uh, film composer Michael Dana, worked with him on several films including 500 Days of Summer, The Life of Pi, and Moneyball. Uh, but eventually, obviously, he broke out on his own with movies like The Way Way Back and The Upside and, of course, Love, Simon. So yeah, he actually has a very impressive list of film scores to his credit now. Now basically what you get with this album is a set of nine compositions that have a gentle piano motif or melody at the heart of each composition. Uh, and on top of that or underneath it, depending on your perspective, they all have a bit of an electronic aura. So just kind of little electronic accentuations, a little bit of a synth here and there. Uh, and n most of the songs also on top of that have uh, an orchestral and choral backing on them. So it's, it's uh, overall, in terms of mood, it's a pretty understated album, as is kind of suggested by the cover art. You know, a, a dark color palette with a little, just a little bit of, uh, you know, bright light here in the, in the center there. And uh, an, another thing that kind of was a selling point for me was that the album title and the names of all the compositions on the album are in French. Yes, yeah, just one more reason for me to appreciate it. I have a soft spot for the French. So yeah, apparently, in reading up on this album, he apparently took a great deal of inspiration from the city of Paris, uh, in which a good share of this album was actually recorded, incidentally, uh, and perhaps France in general. Uh, but one thing that kind of struck me on my second or third listen to this album, and also uh, after translating the song titles that I didn't already know the French meanings of, uh, the English meanings of into English, was uh, how appropriately each of the tracks are named, or mostly all the tracks. Uh, tracks one and two, uh, starting off the album, uh, they're, they're called Silver and Dream, respectively. Uh, they're both mostly slow and kind of languorous in their mood, except for a momentary pickup about two-thirds of the way into the song, and after that they kind of trail off into a bit of an inconspicuous end, and in a way that's kind of like a dream, 
in a way. Uh, I'm sure most of us, most all of us have had dreams like that. You know, they start out kind of boring, they, they pick up, they get a little bit exciting, sort of, and then they just kind of trail off into an end, and they just kind of end without an ending, sort of, so to speak. So that's kind of the impression that those two tracks left on me. Uh, they might be different with you, who knows. Uh, that, then again, that's the beauty of music, right? And uh, now any of the songs here with any sort of a beat to them are very gentle or understated. As I mentioned, the whole album is pretty much understated. Uh, track three, which is whose name translates to Flight, and track five, which translates to Falling Night, those have a more of a waltz-like time signatures, I think both of them do, and have a bit more of a prominent melody to them. They actually have, you know, a bit more of a, a conspicuous melody. And track four, called Heart, um, that is possibly has the song that has prob probably the most pronounced beat on the album, uh, even though, as I said, it's understated and it's very, very steady throughout the whole song, kind of like a heartbeat. And hence the title. I think that's probably why he gave that song the title Kur, or Heart. Now, one of the uh, impressions that I got from this album, uh, partly from the song titles, but also partly from the, the composition, uh, as I listened to it all the way through a few times, is it can, tends to give the impression of being a, an album that uh, takes place, so to speak, mostly uh, overnight, but by the end of the album, uh, day begins to break. For instance, track seven out of nine tracks on the album is called Dawn. That, uh, it translates to Dawn. And as such, it uh, it's one of the more outwardly melodic songs on the album. Uh, the next to the last track, track eight, is called Sky, and it kind of glides along on a uh, kind of a steady rhythm and slowly builds and builds until it's it gives the impression of kind of soaring like birds in the sky. So so you can see what I mean by the titles kind of uh, going with the songs, and then the closing track, which tran whose title translates to Waves, it has a, kind of a similar structure to Sky and that it, it slowly crescendos and crests uh, more than once, uh, kind of like ocean, gentle ocean waves, so to speak. So it's, it's almost like a, a sunrise on the seashore sort of a feel of that song. Now, this album is obviously not for everyone. I'm not sure how many people will even bother watching this video, as I said at the beginning, but I connected with this album much more strongly than I thought I would. Uh, the French connection, <laughs> possibly. And, and also the fact that he was a local at one point, those obviously had something to do with it, and of course the Love, Simon connection as well. But the thing that struck me most about this album that I've really, really been appreciating about it is it's a great album to listen to at night for re relaxation in the evenings. If you've had a tense day at work, or you know, you've got a tension headache, or you know, you just, you're, you're kind of wired up, put this album on with headphones, just sit and close your eyes and just listen to the music it has worked like a charm for me for relaxing. Uh, in fact, last night as I was uh, preparing the notes for this uh, album, you know, jotting down notes as I was uh, listening to the songs, writing down notes by hand, uh, before I put the album on, I was kind of wired, I was kind of tense. I think I had too much iced tea to drink that day. But, uh, you know, in the process of listening to it, I listened to it twice as I was writing the notes. By the end of the album, I was very, very relaxed and ready for bed. It was like I'd been at a, at a spa, you know, you know, a spa treatment or something. I just felt very relaxed. I felt good about myself, the good about the notes that I'd written down, and I was ready to go to bed. And yes, I went to sleep fairly quickly and had a very good night's sleep. So, and I'm sure it was due in no small part to the uh, therapeutic and relaxing effects of this album. So, uh, yeah. So yes, two very, very different albums for you today. Uh, as I said, I don't expect this video to get a lot of views, uh, but maybe, I'm, I'm kind of hoping that maybe some of you who might not typically watch a video that talks about these sort of albums will find something, as I did, something very unexpectedly appealing about both of these albums. Uh, yes, I, I enjoy them very much. Uh, I'm pretty sure Rob Simonson's album is going to be on my favorite albums list at the end of this year, uh, just for, for very atypical reasons to your usual uh, rock and pop and R&B and hip-hop sort of stuff. So, but yeah, as I said, I like to give you guys something unique every once in a while. Something that will, uh, you know, make you tune in and watch, uh, you know, apart from all the other, you know, The Needle Drop and Spectrum Pulse and uh, SME Reviews and, yes, Enter Young Entertainment Specialists and all those other guys out there. Not that they are not great to watch and unique in their own ways. But anyway, I've rambled on long enough. That's it for this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, suggestions, questions, constructive criticisms, lay them on me in the comment section below. Also, scroll down to the description for the link to my Twitter feed and links to my favorite fellow YouTubers who are all worth checking out. 
and don't forget to subscribe to my channel and browse my past videos, and be sure to ring that notifications bell so you'll be the first to know each time I drop a new video. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching, I'll see you next time, and remember, life's too short to be a music snob.